Hello, uh, my name is John Dieben. I'm a genealogy specialist at the National Archives and Records Administration. And in this lecture, we're going to be talking on how to research military service in the regular Army and Navy of the United States. Of course, the service in the regular military, um, this included the professional soldiers. These were the men um, who served during both times of war and during peacetime. Uh, the units that, that they served in, um, were established were established regiments. They had their own history. Um, they existed before the soldiers um, enlisted into service, and they continued on after the soldiers were discharged. Unlike volunteer regiments, who were created and discharged for specific uh, periods of time. Um, so, to document the service in the, the regular army, the War Department did keep a specific set of records called the registers of enlistment. Um, what we have are available the document uh, service in the regular army from 1798 to 1914, just prior to the beginning of World War I. Um, the registers of, en of enlistment are available in textual form and they're also on microfilm in National Archives publication M233. They're arranged by time period and then by the first letter of the initial surname and then by date of enlistment. Um, so to use them effectively you do need to have uh, at least a general time frame of when a soldier enlisted to find him in the records. Uh, the basic information that uh, an entry in the register of, of enlistment will, will give you includes the, the name of the soldier, uh, his rank, um, a physical description including height, eye color, hair color, complexion, um, his civilian occupation, um, his date and place of birth, um, his enlistment information when he was listed and discharged, um, and he usually gives the place of discharge as well, and at the end of it, it usually gives a brief summary of his character as a soldier at the time that he was discharged. So it gives you a pretty good um, basic information about the beginning of a soldier's service and his ending, ending of his service. Um, as an example, we'll look at a register, register of enlistment for an Alfred Pride, um, who enlisted in 1878. Now the registers, the entries in each register covers uh, two pages. So if we look through the whole entry, um, this is the information that we glean about Alfred Pride's service. It shows that he enlisted July 11th, 1878. He was originally born in Richmond, Virginia. He was 32 at the time that he uh, enlisted. Um, he, he identified his occupation as a soldier, so that's an indication that he was a career soldier, um, and he might have enlisted uh, prior to that, this time. Um, his physical description included uh, he had black hair and he was 5 foot 8 inches tall. Um, he was assigned to the Company F of the 24th U.S. Infantry, um, and this, this was actually his third enlistment. So um, the fact that he identified him as himself as a soldier uh, reflects that. Um, he was discharged from service on February 10, 1883. Um, his expiration of service took place at Fort Elliott, Texas. Um, he was a private at the end of his service, and his character as a soldier at the time of his discharge was listed as good. So he probably had a very, fairly typical um, service as a soldier during his, his time in the Army. Now, the Navy equivalent of the Register of Enlistments was the, were the rendezvous reports. Uh, these were the week, weekly reports that were uh, compiled by recruiting officers in the Navy. Um, the records that we have available begin with the Mexican War and go to the early 1890s. Uh, there are two separate indexes that are available for the rendezvous reports, and they're both on microfilm. Um, the one publication is T1089 or 1098, uh, which includes rendezvous reports for before and directly after the Civil War from 1846 to 61 and from 1865 to 1884. Uh, the other index specifically covers Civil War service and it's microfilm publication T1099, covering the years 1861 to 65. And the actual reports themselves, the weekly rendezvous reports, are available on microfilm as well in publication M1953, Weekly Returns of Enlistments at Naval Rendezvous, from January 6, 1855 to August 8, 1891. Uh, basic information that you can find on the rendezvous report for a typical sailor includes his name, again his date and term of enlistment, his rating, which was the naval equivalent of his rank, um, his previous naval service, if any, um, his usual place of residence, which means where he usually um, resided when he was on land and not at sea. Um, his place of birth, again, his civilian occupation, a personal description, and will also include um, information about distinguishing marks and scars um, that he may have had on his person to help, again, further identify who he was. 
Um, a typical example, we'll take a look at uh, the rendezvous report for James G. Mason. Um, if, we, if we read his entry in the rendezvous reports, we'd learn that he enlisted on June 25th, 1884 at Mare Island, California. He enlisted for one cruise on the Monongahela. Um, he was 22 years of age at the time of his enlistment. His occupation was a cook. Um, his physical description shows that he was a Negro, um, five foot, one and a half inches tall, born in East Oakland, California. Um, he had a scar on his left leg and a tattoo of a shield cross and flag on his left forearm. And his rating at that time was a landsman, which means that he had no prior um, service at sea when, at the time that he enlisted in the Navy. Again, the availability of the records, um, in addition to the original records, um, what's available on microfilm, especially for the register of enlistments, are, are available on Ancestry.com. Um, you can also find uh, the information, some information on Footnote and Heritage Quest, or you can request uh, service information from the regular Army or Navy um, through a mail-in service with a mail-in form that are available on the, the National Ar Archives website at www.archives.gov.